I wanted to just pop in and talk to you quick. Amy's not here today. We've been really having trouble getting our schedules to line up this summer. Um, but I did a little video on how I do corrugated ribbing because I started my Christmas knitting and I'm uh, working on a pair of mittens for my daughter. So I wanted to just show you a little bit on how I do corrugated ribbing. And then I have some other chatter I'll show you again afterward. So right now, corrugated ribbing. Okay, I am making some mittens and it calls for corrugated ribbing. So I thought I would just show you my corrugated ribbing. I'm wearing these knitting rings. I ordered a different one that's just one ring, but these are two ring, two different rings. See, um, I am using those until my other ring comes and it actually works pretty good. It And what's really nice is because they're adjustable, you know, this one's bigger and this one's smaller, so they, they don't really roll too easy. So as you see the corrugated ribbing, so the blues are knit and the white is purled. And this is the bottom of the mitten. I have to have 15 rows total. So I'm just gonna show you how I do that. I just go ahead and I knit the blue and then I do a per Portuguese purl, which you go under the yarn, under the stitch, put your needle to the back, pick up the yarn and bring it back around forward and through the loop. I mean, it's kind of fiddly, but once you get used to a Portuguese pearl, it's kind of nice because your, your yarn can always stay in the back. And then, so, you know, if I had to do this and put the yarn in the front, it, it doesn't work so well. But with this Portuguese knitting, it is not such a pain. And it took me a minute before I remembered how to do it. At first, the first row I did it, all my stitches were twisted, but it's not so hard. I learned how to do the Portuguese purling on a Arnie and Carlos video. Um, that was the best one I found. Um, Arnie was doing it, showing you how to do it. I think it was Arnie. I just remember it was Arnie and Carlos. It was probably more than a year ago I learned. Um, but it works kind of slick and I love the look of this corrugated ribbing. Um, it's going to be a color work mitten. Um, this yarn is a little bit thin. I might redo these mittens with a beefier blue. You can probably see how, how thin the blue is. So I don't know. I might have two pair of exact mittens, we'll see. But yeah, so I just thought I'd show you how I do it. I hope you're all doing well. I was just sitting here on a Monday afternoon watching some podcast and doing this and I thought I should video myself instead of watching other people's videos. So, here we are. I'll just keep going till the end of the row, and then I'll shut it off so you don't, I know you don't want to watch this forever and ever, but just in case you want to try to follow my Portuguese knitting. And doesn't these rings look work slick? I mean, you've been watching me. As long as you wrap it around at one finger on the bottom or, or some way to control your tension on the bottom, you can just keep going and going. Never have to readjust. Never have your yarns twisting round and round each other. Oops. Almost knit instead of purled. We're getting close to the end. The very last stitch is always kind of tricky. It stretches out a little. And remember to tighten it up as soon as you go around the other side. I 
I hope that I got this all in, in frame for you. And I just leave the ring on and everything when I turn it around. I just turn around, swap the needles. Like I said, I need 15 rows. So I'm about halfway done, I think. It's easiest if I count the pearl rows. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, I guess I'm only a third of the way done. I'm at the beginning of the row because that's where my tail is. Actually, I leave the tails on this one just for that reason. Um, just to show you the beginning of the row. Oh, now I lied. I said I was going to stop filming at the end of the row. And here I am, still filming, still going. If you're ever in the neighborhood at the shop and you want to stop in to get some help to learn how to do this, stop in and see me in and we can do it together. I have to remember to take my rings in and I got a few extra um, that I can take to the shop too. I think I'm going to get it another dozen of them so I can have them at the shop. So there you go, corrugated ribbing with two colors. Well, that's what corrugated means, the two colors. Using uh, knitting rings and Portuguese pearls. So maybe that stuff's all new to you. I'll take this out, show you those rings a little more, you know, closely. Um, there's just enough room for your yarn to go through. It's tight enough that they don't come out. It stays put. Like I said, they're adjustable. They're an adjustable ring. So you just turn it to uh, fit you. When you put it on, you make it so the, the hook goes this way. And like I said, you gotta, I usually hold it around one finger here um, like this. I put it around my ring finger. You can do whatever feels comfortable to you. I put it around that finger and then I come up and put it, the blue on this side and the white on this side. You always want the pearl color to the left. So you can scoop under just that one before you pick up your pearl stitch. So that's that. Thank you very much. And I hope that helps you. Okay, so here's the other mitten I told you about. It's kind of naughty, so remember that. The name of the mitten is called How Cold Is It? And you see what I mean, though, about the, um, the bumpiness when you're catching the floats all the time. I don't know if I really like that. I mean, this is an extreme close-up. So you, it's accentuated, but it never lays flat. That's why I might make another one. And then if the floats are too big, cause way up on top here, I mean, there's a row right here, I think it is, where there's only two, and that's not it, but somewhere up here, there's only two blue spots in a row all the way across. So obviously you can't go um, all the way across without catching your floats somewhere, but maybe I'll just catch a couple and see how it is. And I might have to make them and then make a liner. So I think if I try to make them again after this pair, I'm going to start with a provisional cast on in case I have to make a liner. And then in which case, if I had to make a liner, I'd pick up the provisional cast on and then pearl a row with just one color and then go from there and make a whole nother mitten just flat one color. So, and then tuck it inside. So we'll see what I end up doing. Um, I'm most likely I'm gonna make a second pair. Oh, you can see my English paper piecing that I was working on this morning. I like to do English paper piecing 
while I'm drinking my coffee in the morning. I'm on my turquoise color row. I'm making a rainbow blanket. Um, so I just use these little hexes. I glue them to paper and then I sew very tiny little whip stitches all the way across, put a knot on each end and, uh, and just keep sewing. So yeah, it turns out pretty. I'm really loving the finished look of it. So like I said, this is a turquoise row and it is rows 23 and 24 of my blankets. So I'm probably gonna end up with about 32 to 36 rows, somewhere in there. So it's gonna be quite a long blanket if each one is two inches. Well, that won't be too long. If it's 36, it'll be 72 inches. That'll probably be just right, that's six feet. So there you go, English paper piecing and my corrugated ribbing on the bumpy color work. Thanks, bye. Okay, um, I hope that enjoy you enjoyed that and it helps some people. Um, the couple things I wanted to talk about is our summer sock knit along is done this week. So if you have any of your summer socks done, get them on Ravelry so you can be in the drawing for prizes. Uh, it goes until the 25th, but I think I'll extend it out till Sunday. I won't close the thread till like Sunday night. I'll show you my mine I got done real quick if you want to see them. I did the Get Shorty socks. I did a pair of those. This is Heritage Stripe. And then I did just a basic pair of socks. I did a um, top down afterthought heel. I ran a little cable in there. Um, it's, this is Vesper sock. So I got a pair of those done. And then I have another top down, just vanilla shorty sock slip stitch heel, one by one rib, regular toe. I, I do a rounded toe, which is you go halfway up, decreasing every other row, and then the last bit you decrease every row. Oh, maybe I didn't on this one. I typically do that. Like you can see it better on here. See how it's more rounded? Cause that's how I do that. But you know, this yarn is Sakata from Plymouth Yarns. And it's half cotton, half wool. And it's really nice to feel and work with, but you can't see your stitches very well because of the marling. So I had a hard time seeing. So I think I just kept going. Oh, just a minute. Sorry, that was the phone ringing. Uh, yeah, so, like I said, this is nice yarn, feels nice, um, knits beautifully, but you can't see your stitches that well. So um, I ran another skein of this through the sock machine and I'll just have to add heels and toes, but I'm gonna add the heels and toes with the same yarn because I don't have another yarn that's the same uh, fiber content. So I'll, I'll let you know how that goes. So, um, and then my fourth pair is not quite done, but I will get it done yet this week. This is um, Bring in the Clowns, my pattern, which is free on the website till August 31st. If you want the pattern, download it now for free. So this is how it looks. It's gonna have an afterthought heel. I made it kind of a shorty. And then the second one, I just put in the waist yarn for the afterthought heel. That one is just about done too. I, I think I'll finish them between Thursday night knitting and Friday afternoon knitting. It should be fine. I'll get those done. 
And then I just wanted to let you know, if you didn't see our newsletter, that um, we will be having a new knit along in September. The September one is Ranunculus. I know you know what that looks like. Everybody knows the Ranunculus. So um, go and check that out. I'll open a thread for it in Ravelry on Sunday when I close the one for the socks. And uh, you can join in there, participate there. Um, you can pop in there when you pick your colors of yarn you're gonna use, and then pop in there again and shows your progress, and then pop in again and shows your FO. So um, I'll draw from that at the end, maybe the middle too, and give out prizes. So um, watch that for, for prizes. Um, Let's see, I think that's all I have for you. Um, no Roomba today, because Roomba was very naughty this morning. I came in and there was yarn everywhere. It got a hold of a skein of sock yarn and it just took it everywhere. And I untangled all the yarn that was spun around that little brush, got it all untangled and put away. But uh, yeah, so Roomba was naughty this morning. Um, yeah, so it's just me all by myself today. You have a great day and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.